Researchers in Australia asked parents of high ability children, gifted children, a simple question. What do you most want for your child? Expecting answers like success, money, international recognition, a prolific career, the researchers were surprised with the number one response from parents. I just want my child to be happy. You see, neither parent nor child want to show off. Giftedness is usually not something that's even wished for by the family. This advanced brain comes with its own set of unique challenges and opportunities. Every week I receive emails about one of the main challenges for these families. Finding the right classroom for the child. And this is really a foundational question. How do we get the learning environment right? Because we can architect a vision for a fantastic future, but none of it really matters without that solid base. I've been working with high performers for more than 20 years. And in that time, I've just about seen it all. Grammy Award winners, Disney princesses, chess masters, Bolshoi ballerinas, toddlers with their own abstract art exhibitions. I've supported Acceleration for hundreds of them. In every case, getting the learning environment right was a basic, formative and effective step. Do you think the 10 and 11 year old Olympic gymnasts were forced to stay back with the other 10 and 11 year olds at their school still learning how to swing their arms? It's the same with that 10 year old maths prodigy creating a new math theorem. What sort of person could force them to stay back and learn their times tables all over again. To maintain this hunger to learn, they need to be in the right learning environment for their brain. And their brain is so much older than their physical age. Here's a simple calculation you can use to find out a conservative mental age for your child. Take their IQ score, maybe it's 130, and shift the decimal to the left by two places. 130 becomes 1.3, 140 becomes 1.4. Then multiply their physical age, their chronological age, that's how old they are today, by this IQ ratio. 10 years old times 1.3 becomes a mental age of 13 years old. And that's the conservative reality. It's not as rare as it might seem that 10 year olds have the brain of a high school student. We've known for a very long time that any child with an IQ of just 130 needs classwork that is at least two years above that of their age peers. That they should be learning at a pace that's comfortable for them. Less repetition less holding back. This process has been called acceleration, but I prefer the term releasing the brakes. Get out of their way. Let them flourish. The international evidence is plentiful. Now, thousands of studies and papers, possibly millions of pages of literature, all finding positive outcomes for acceleration. Here in Australia, we've contributed significantly to the research base. The Australian government conducted Senate committee inquiries in the 1980s and again in the early 2000s, both times building on the recommendation from the experts. Acceleration just works. Releasing the brakes just works. Think about it. Would you benefit socially and emotionally from being forced to only talk with, 
live with and mix with people of your exact physical age? What about being sentenced to years of going back to school? I'm sure we'd see some underachievement, if not due to pure boredom, then due to sheer indignation. My colleague in Nevada, Bob Davidson, says that holding these children back in a classroom that's years beneath their real mental age is emotional torture, that someone should go to jail for that. I agree. This is such a simple and well-researched premise. It's a foundation. A recent study of American Mensa members found that the older gifted population had levels of anxiety at twice the rate of the general population. There are visible social and emotional dangers in forcing a child to be in a classroom that matches their physical age rather than their mental age. What some call chronological apartheid. On the flip side, when a child is finally allowed to mix with other children that think like them, whose brains are up to speed with theirs, everything starts going right. Of course, there are significant personal advantages to acceleration. The academic well-being is obvious. The social and emotional benefits come from finding like minds, developing resilience and experiencing challenge within teams. But there are also broader impacts in finding the right classroom. A colleague was involved with supporting a child in her radical acceleration. This is whole year level acceleration of three years or more. In this case, the child finished high school, university, and then she became a heart surgeon, three years earlier than usual. This colleague asked the question, how many more lives were saved because of saving this one little girl's life? The school branding doesn't matter. The uniform doesn't matter. The Latin motto doesn't matter. The $50,000 school fees don't matter. Enrichment, extension, advanced classes. These are not effective for the gifted learner. They need to be in the right environment for their advanced brain. And a classroom with others who think like them is just the beginning. It's the foundation. That's when the fun starts. That's when we can start looking at the stuff that really matters. That's when we get to the good stuff. We can start talking about confidence, agency, pathways, motivation, engagement, persistence, goal commitment, aliveness, happiness, and joy. Because a child who is surrounded by their real peers is a joyful child. A child who is near others who think like them is a socially and emotionally flourishing child. A child who has been seen is a child that is ready to live their best life. This one simple and proven process unlocks a whole world of potential. It brings like minds, new friends, it makes way for a love of learning. It reignites the spark of life 